This TV Mass is brought to you live by Philippine Long Distance Telephone SME Nation. Success through technology with PLDT SME Nation. As we gather today for love of Jesus, we claim His promise that where two or three are gathered in His name, that He will truly be in the midst of us. We begin then in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Pumasok na po tayo sa panahon ng kwaresma, called the season of grace, the joyful season where God invites us again to accept His offer to renew our lives and live up to our being children. Sa mga pagkakataon tayo hindi na buhay bilang mga anak ng Diyos na may malasakit at pag-ibig, we ask His forgiveness. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Let us pray. Grant Almighty God, to the yearly observance of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. God promises that never again shall living creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. The rainbow is a sign of this covenant between God and God's creatures. The first reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you. All the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, 
This is the sign that I'm giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the, clo in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings, so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just as Noah and his family were saved in the ark, Christians are saved by baptism through which they share in the death and resurrection of Jesus. The second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. It is also when he, he went to preach to the spirits in prison, who had once been disobedient while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark 
in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism which saves you now. It is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to give glory and honor to the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for forty days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Sisters and brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Ang isa pong pari namin nakahanap ng isang libro na ang pangalan po, Pope Francis Untying the Knots. Pinahiram sa isang pari namin din sa St. Paul at nang ito'y binalik na andun ako. So kakos pasilip nga, binuksan ko, hindi ko na maibaba yung libro. It tells us exactly what was in the heart, what is in the heart of this present Pope. Pushes him. What makes him tick? What are the things that are of value to him? What are the things he considers important? Yung kanyang pinagdaanan nung siya ay ubispo pa ng Argentina, los Buenos Aires, hanggang sa siya ay na-elect na Santo Papa. Kaya hindi ko rin mababa kasi marami chismis dito <laughs> tungkol sa pagbobotohan, sa conclave, kung ano yung mga bagay na nangyari, the things that are we are we consider ecclesiastical gossips. <laughs> Alam niyo po, nakakatuwa. But it tells us exactly why Pope Francis is the Pope that we have today. And why he is this kind of a man that charms the church. You know? Alam niyo, from the time of his election, itong Santo Papa, sasabi mo ng iba, Well, firstly, because he's the first Jesuit ever to become Pope. Secondly, because he's the first South American to ever become a Pope. But not only that, because doon sa unang gabi pa lang, the first night that he became Pope, he broke, pakinggan niyo to, 11 protocols. Traditions na dating ginagawa ng simbahan, ngunit desisyon niya na tanggalin at palitan. Kung isa-isahin natin, makikita niyo kung bakit. Alam niyo po, each of the cardinal was given a right to speak for five minutes bago nung araw, ba, ng ilang araw bago ng conclave. So that each one would be able to present kung ano ang view niya tungkol sa simbahan, kung ano ang concerns niya na dapat i-address, bagay na dapat to be continued o bagay na dapat palitan. When it was the turn of Cardinal Bergoglio of Los of Buenos Aires, he stood up and he did not make a five-minute speech, only three and a half. But many of the cardinals looked at him and said, 
that was an electrifying speech. Somebody even said, that was a speech that we need. And people began to look at him and said the one word that many times have been repeated mula ngayon. He spoke from the heart. Yun ang kanilang sinabi. Aba, ibang klase ito. One cardinal was even so touched by it. He said, pahingi nga ng kopya. Eh, hindi niya naman talaga gumawa from the heart. So, ang ginawa niya, isinulat niya uli. And one of the things that he underlined there was this. Ang sabi niya, para tayong buwan. Ang simbahan, walang tunay na may liwanag na kanya. What you see of the moon is the reflection of the light of the sun. Ganun din dapat ang simbahan. We do not have a light of our own. We shine as the church of Christ and only reflect the light of Christ. Kung anong nasa puso ni Kristo, yan ang dapat ipakita at ipamalas natin sa iba. But more than that, he also said this, we have to truly see the church in its periphery. Aya, dumabas na kaagad si periphery. Yung mga nasa labas, yung mga hindi masyadong nahahalata, yung hindi masyadong pinapansin, yung hindi binibigyan halaga, the periphery. Because in there is the church as well. Aba, nagkaroon ng huring-huring, parang okay yung si Bergoglio. <laughs> you know? Before the election, the day itself, bago sila pumasok doon sa conclave, kanya-kanya silang nagmisa. Nung araw na yan, gumising siya ng 6.30 in the morning. Pumunta siya doon, marami pong chapels yun. And there was a priest preparing to celebrate the Mass. Ang sabi niya, pwedeng makipag-concelebrate. Hindi niya pinabi, Hi, Cardinal, ako tumabi ka. <laughs> Akong magmimisa. Ikaw, props ka. <laughs> Hindi. Alam mo, he insisted when the new guy, the new priest, was say, No, your eminence, kayo ho dapat. Ang sabi niya, No, it's okay. And without insisting on his position, he concelebrated with his priest. And this priest does not know that in two days' time, etong kanyang server will be the Pope of the Church. Nung hapong iyon, there was the first election. A black smoke came out to tell us there was no Pope. Ayon sa chismis ng librong ito, <laughs> nag-uumpisa ng umakyat yung number niya. Kinaumagahan, there were supposed to be two votes in the morning, two votes in the afternoon. In the second vote, clearly, umaangat na siya. In the third vote, it was beginning to be clear he could be Pope. Nung hapon, there were two votings that were supposed to be done. And the fourth vote, white smoke came out. And immediately, the people were informed, a Pope has been chosen. Kaagad, biglang napuno ang buong Vatican Square of people wanting, sino ang bagong Santo Papa? Who is the new Pope of the Church? Within the Sistine Chapel, may dramang nangyayari. At ang sabi nila, nang makita doon ni Bergoglio na tumataas na yung kanyang number, biglang tumahimik siya. Parang ramdam niya yung burden na kanyang haharapin bilang Santo Papa. And when finally his numbers rose, according to them, sumampa siya sober sa requirement na kanilang hinihinging three-fourths vote. He was much, much above it. And he was asked in Latin, your cardinal brothers have chosen you to be Pope. Do you accept? Kaagad ang sagot niya na minsan nasabi na natin, Ako'y isang makasalanan. But as I trust in the mercy and compassion of God, I accept. At tinatanggap ko tong responsibility ito bilang parusa sa aking mga kasalanan. Matakin mo yun. Parusa pala ang tawag niya roon. Penitence niya. Napakabigat na responsibilidad. Hindi niya tinignan bilang, Wow, okay, kapatid, ibahin niyo na ako. I am the Pope. Immediately he saw it as something that will, he will have to accept in order to atone for kanyang mga makasala, kasalanan. That was the first 
They never heard any pope except in that way, declaring himself a sinner, trusting in the mercy of God, and seeing this office, the highest authority of the church, as a penance for his sins. Pero ito, protocol number one, kaagad. Eh, anong pangalan po ninyo ang inyong pong gagamitin? And he says, Francis. Nagpalakpakan ng kardinal, pero nagtatanong siya, Aba, bago to. No one in the whole history of the church has ever chosen the name Francis. At in-explain niya yun pagkatapos ng magsalita siya. People were asking, ah, Francis of Assisi ba? Ah, Francis Xavier ba? Francis ganito ba? And he said, ang hindi po alam ng marami na yung isang kardinal na kaibigan kong sobra, nilapitan ako. At nang makitang pataas na yung mga numero, sinabi niya sa akin, do not forget the poor. And I realized immediately that day, I had to be Pope Francis. That's the first. Never na nangyari yun. Nang tinanggap niya ngayon, dinala niya siya ngayon doon sa bihisan. At doon may mga bagay na dapat sundin. Ayon sa tradisyon. Number one. Siyempre, pasusuotin siya ng puti. Tatanggalin niya yung skull cap niya. Papalitan ngayon yun ng puti. Susutuan siya ng puti. Tapos mayroon sang shas na malaki. Puro puti lahat. Pero kasama noon, may apat pang bagay na dapat siyang isuot. Number one, papalitan mo yung pectoral cross mo, yung cross ng ubispo. At pinapili siya, andun na pakarami. Mantakin mo yung mga binigay ng mga emperador in the past. Things that were gifts of kings and queens of the past. Bejeweled things, very precious. At pinapili siya. Tinignan niya at ang sabi, ah, uh, Wag na lang yan. Eto na lang. At kinuha niya yung kanyang pewter na siyang lamang plated silver. Hindi nga tunay na silver. And decided to say, eto na lang ang aking gagamitin. That is the same pectoral cross that the Holy Father is using. Secondly, dapat susuutan siya nung tinasabing mo, Zeta, yung parang hanggang dito lang at yun ay dapat pula. At may ermine pa. Yan ay skin ng isang animal. Because you are supposed to look royal as king, as head of the church. Tinignan niya at ang sabi, uh, pwede na rin hindi na. At kaagad, dinisyon, hindi na gagamitin. He will be ordinary like anyone. Hindi siya magmamataas bilang isa who belongs to the royalty. Third, dapat pag sinuot mo yung iyong damit, may cufflinks pang kasama. Sinabi niya, ah, pwede na rin hindi na. Tinanggal si cufflinks. Pang-apat, dapat magsuot ka ng pulang sapatos. Because only the emperors of Rome and the popes of Rome are permitted to wear that. Tinignan niya, may limang sizes na naandun, nakabalot sa napakagandang mga papel at boxes. Tinignan niya, tinignan niya yung lumang sapatos at sabi, ah, uh, eto na lang, pwede pa. They could not believe it. He was breaking protocol one after another. In fact, this book will also tell us na itong Santo Papa, sabagat nakikita niya para nasisira na, tinawagan niya yung kanyang uh, shoemaker doon sa Argentina. Pwede ko bang ipadala yung sapatos ko riyan para ipaayos? Papa to, ha? At ang sagot, Holy Father, wag na po padadala na lang namin kayo ng bago. He had to be convinced, let go of the old shoes ng babamit mo naman etong bago. Pagkatapos ng maisuot ng lahat ng yun, he was so ordinary, people look at him and said, wow, we have some changings, changes that are happening. Nang lumabas siya, kaagad, hindi niya binating the peace of the Lord with you and with all of those ecclesiastical na mga formula. Alam mo, sabi niya lang niya sa Italiano, Bonasera, oy, good evening. Nagulat silang lahat. Aba, ibang klase to. So common. And then, here is the Pope who is supposed to bless the people of God telling them, can I ask a favor? Can you please pray for me? Something that he will constantly repeat, asking the people ang pinakamataas na pinuno ninyo ng ang ilangan ng inyong dasal. 
and he bows low before the people of God before giving them his blessing as Pope, asking for the purse ng lahat ng sambay na. May nag-comment? At that moment, sa gulat ng iba, that here is the Pope asking for the purse, there was total silence in the hundreds of thousands of people at the Vatican Square. Nakatingin bigla. And truly from the heart, they began to pray for the Pope. And in that silence, as he bowed his head low, yung mga cardinal, syempre, parang nahiya na rin, yung mga asungot nagbaw na rin. Within the conclave, he addressed the cardinals. He could have called them Lord Cardinals. That's a title because they are princesses of the church. But immediately, pinamalas niya sa kanila, sa kabila ng ako ay papa, ako pa rin equal ninyo. My dear brother cardinals. At nang inintroduce niyang sabi, sinigurado niya na minsan may hindi niya sinabi, the vicar of Christ, the successor of Peter, the pontiff Maximus. He only said, the bishop of Rome. Talagang kitang-kita mo yung hangad niyang magpakubaba to mind the others na may pake. At nang araw din yon pagkatapos na siya ma-introduce at naibigay ang blessing, nakahanda na. The rest of the cardinals were supposed to go into the bus that took them from one side to another. And there was a beautiful limousine that waited for the Holy Father. That limousine will go back to Santa Marta na walang laman. Bakit? Ang naunang sumakay sa bus ay ang Santo Papa. At of course, alam namin ang storya na nang sila'y kumakain, hinarap niya mga kardinal at ang unang sinabi sa kanila, My brother cardinals, hiningi ko na kay Lord na patawarin kayo sa inyong ginawang pagboto sa akin. <laughs> Why are we telling these stories? Because immediately you see that this Pope understands who he is. Kaya no wonder ngayon sasabihin niya sa atin, live simply. Pag namili kayo, huwag kayong bumili ng sadong bongga. Because precisely as he invites us into the season of Lent, he came up with a letter para sa ating lahat. At ito ang kanyang sinabi. Riches and wealth will make you feel that they are forever. But in the end, they will just make you long for them. And you realize in the end, hindi na ikaw ang nagpo-possess sa kanila. They possess you. Let me just read a portion of the letter of the Holy Father. Ang sabi niya, Lent is a time of renewal for the whole church, for its communities, and for every believer. Above all, it is a time of grace. God does not ask anything that He Himself has not given to us first. We love because He has first loved us. He is not aloof to us. Hindi siya malayo sa atin. Each one of us, pakinggan mabuti, has a place in His heart. He knows each of us by name. He cares for us. And He seeks out what whenever, He seeks us out whenever we turn away from Him. Kapatid, He is interested in each of us. His love does not allow Him to be indifferent to what happens to us. Then, nagposya. Usually, when we are healthy and comfortable, we forget about others. Something that God the Father never does. We are unconcerned with the problems of others. We are unconcerned with the, their sufferings. We do not mind the injustices they endure. And then, our heart grows cold. Then, sinabi niya, as long as I am relatively healthy and comfortable, we sometimes feel I do not think about those less well off. Today, this selfish attitude of indifference has taken on global proportions to the extent that we can speak of globalization of indifference. It is a problem which we as Christians must confront. Anong sinasabi ng Santo Papa? Ingat tayo. Na tayo ay maging isang simbahan na walang pake sa mga mahihirap. Simbahan na hindi natin pinoproblema ang problema ng iba. Kadalasan sasabihin pa natin, hindi ko naman hindi naman ako ng kasalanan doon na kasalanan naman nila. 
And yet the Holy Father tells us the season of Lent is a season when we look at ourselves and realize sobra tayong minahal ni Lord. And even as He has loved us, we cannot be indifferent to the problems of others. The season of Lent is a going back into the desert and realize ang rami nating bagay na meron tayo na actually hindi ganun kahalaga. In that first night of His election, the Holy Father looked at all of these things that were offered Him. The, the new cross, the red shoes, the, all of these, ang sabi niya, not necessary. One can still serve without all of these. And He invites us today, as we enter into the season of land, to go into the desert and realize, ang dami nating bagay na pwedeng ilit go na hindi naman kasing halaga. Mga bagay na in the end burden us to live the life that is to be lived simply and for others. Today we pray for a heart. A heart that says, Lord, nilelet ko ko to kasi yung iba walang wala. The word compassion is a beautiful thing to remember. Nasasaktan ako kasi nasasaktan ka. Mas maganda. Nasasaktan Tan ako kasi wala pa akong nagawang maputi para sa yung mas nangangailangan. The culture of indifference is something we should confront. And that's the invitation of a Holy Father to be the church that shines with the light of Christ. Amen. Tayo magsitayo. As we declare, I believe in one God. The Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Like Jesus who was tempted in the desert, let us ask the Lord to accompany us in the various temptations in life so that we will always overcome them. In a special way, we lift up to God, our Father, our needs, and petitions for the particular needs of Filipino migrants everywhere. With confidence in His grace, we pray, Lord, strengthen us with Your love. Lord, strengthen us with Your love that our church leaders continue to be committed in their concern for the poor, especially among the migrants and their families, we pray. Lord, Lord strengthen, strengthen us, us with your, your love. That our civil leaders will do their best to serve the people entrusted to them, mindful also of their responsibility to take care of the migrants and their families, we pray. Lord, Lord strengthen, strengthen us with your, your love that overseas Filipino workers be continuously accompanied by God as they work and live in foreign lands, especially in moments of temptation to abandon the religious and cultural values, we pray. Lord, strengthen us with your love. That the Filipino workers who had been abused, exploited, and suffering from all forms of unjust treatment in their moments of abandonment and loneliness, be sustained and comforted, we pray. Lord, strengthen us with your love. That the consecrated persons devote themselves to education, training, and professional formation of the young people 
so that they in turn will be committed to eliminating structures of oppression and to promoting projects of solidarity for the benefit of the poor, we pray. Lord, strengthen us with your love. The grieving families left behind by the demise of overseas workers find comfort in the assurance that their loved ones are now peacefully in God's kingdom, we pray. Lord, strengthen us with your love. We pray for the healing of Heidi Panakiton, Susan Bamba, Gemma Catalio, Vic Tobias, Elsie Uy, Ramon Velasquez, Beth St. Hilario, Wilfredo Espinosa, Boy, Boy Avila, and Alice Sobrewanite, my sister-in-law. We pray for the birthday intentions of Lynn Benedict Doble. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, strengthen us with your love. Almighty God, may you pour upon us all the graces we most need, especially for our migrant brothers and sisters who continue to seek your comfort and your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing while the gifts are being offered. Sacrifice in mind, be made acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Give us the right disposition, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Jesus our Lord. By abstaining for a long days from earthly food, He consecrated through His fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feasts. And so with company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim.
Indeed, Holy, O Lord, the fount of holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the blood and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with Luis Antonio, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, with Him, and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. We now pray to the Father in heaven that we may see the true value of life, God's importance in ours, and our importance before Him. We pray the prayer Jesus taught us.
So Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior Jesus the Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I give you peace, my peace I give you. Look not, Lord, on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. To fight against the culture of indifference. Yung walang pake, yung manhid sa problema ng iba. Let's begin it today by truly wishing a prayer of peace, really from the heart. Para sa taong ating katabi. We bless one another with God's gift of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. This is Jesus who decided to be poor so that we can be a church of the poor. Happy are we who come to receive him. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you who are unable to receive Holy Communion, especially our brothers and sisters who are joining us in this TV Mass, we invite you to pray with us this prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
ating CBCP ay mayroon pong isang komisyon para sa Migrant Filipinos. Ang hindi po siguro alam ng marami na ang ating pong sambayan ng Pilipino, marami po tayong OFWs. Sa Middle East lamang lampas sa limang milyon. Marami po sa kanila naging successful at nagpadala ng mga dollars na na-earn para sa ating dito. Pero marami din po sa kanila dumanas na napakatanding hirap. Umalis sa mga malala, sa pamilya, sa piling ng mga minamahal, nagbaka sakali at dumaan sa matinding hirap. So ang ating pong Cardinal is inviting us to make a second collection today para po sa ating mga migrant brothers and sisters. Marami po sa kanila yung nangangailangan ng tulong at ang Bishop's Conference is asking us to reach out to them, not to be indifferent to their plight, to tell them may nagmamahal pa rin sa kanila at sila hindi nakakalimutan at sila'y mahalaga. Ang collection pong yan ay ibibigay sa Bishop's Conference at sila po ang mamahamahalang ibigay doon sa mga tunay na nangangailangan. It's our way of telling them na tayo'y may pake. Ikalawa, nais ko pong i-announce Ako po'y minsay na imbita ng grupo ni Brother Bo Sanchez na magbigay ng talk doon po sa kanilang Kerigma Conference sa PICC. Yang talk pong yan ay uulitin ko po this coming Wednesday. Dito po sa chapel na to at around 8 o'clock in the evening pagkatapos po ng ating worship. Ang talk po ay, paano mo ba sasabihin ng maayos ang magandang balita. How to become not just a lector, but a true proclaimer. How do you make the message of the gospel truly matter in the lives of others? Ito po'y libre sa mga nais pong pumunta, lalong-lalo po sa mga speakers ng ibang communities, sa mga charismatic groups, at sa mga sinasabing dapat po kayo'y magbigay ng talk sa iba. This talk will help you at kayo po'y inaanyayan. Libre po to dito po sa Chapel of the Eucharistic Lord Wednesday at 8 o'clock in the evening. Sa mga taga Cebu po, ako po'y pupunta sa Cebu sa, sa Tuesday and early Wednesday. Ako po'y magbibigay din ng talk sa Couples for Christ doon sa Cebu tungkol po sa kanilang topic of loving God more. Yan po ay... Uh, Couples for Christ doon po sa Cebu, Tuesday evening. Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and present yourself as a church that truly considers may malasakit, may puso para sa iba. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Sabayan po natin ang choir. Give thanks with a great Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He has given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He has given Jesus Christ His Son. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. 
because of what the Lord has done for us and now let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done For us, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks.